Um, Speak up, then go back. <laughs> and on the stairs. <laughs> I, I wasn't brought up in a religious family or one that was of the faith at all. Um, my father was brought up um, with a Catholic background by, uh, from an Irish background by Catholics, so had enough of a bad experience to scare him away from anything to do with God or the Bible. Um, my mother sadly passed away when I was five, but I was blessed that the primary school that she chose to send us to, we, it was a Christian school, and so we said the Lord's Prayer every morning, and we said grace, and we read the Bible on, an after, on a Monday afternoon, and, and I praise God because that school is one of the only things that I think saved me from so many other things in my life. And, and in retrospect, I can see how he's had his hand in my life all along. Um, when I was a teenager, I um, <coughs> went slightly off the rails, as lots of teenagers do. I, I had the revelation the other day, actually, that uh, it was my friend introduced me to Marilyn Manson's music and his autobiography, and I think that was the first opening for Hasatan to, you know, get me, <laughs> come into my life and, and pull me further away from the Lord. Although my experience with my mother dying had actually, um, had actually made me feel like I didn't want God, because the, the explanation I had for my mother passing away so young was that it was God's will, and that was all that was said to me, and so, so I thought, you know, you, you can keep your God. And, Sorry. Um, so, yeah, as, you know, as a teenager, I got into metal music, which, you know, I think most of us, all of us here know is, is you know, <laughs> satanic, yeah, you know, to be blunt, yeah, we're doing devil hand signs and all of that sort of thing. And, and, and in my late teens, I started doing drugs and I was drinking a lot and I was going to three or four day parties and it was pretty debaucherous and um, and that continued into my 20s I then I'm a singer so the music industry unfortunately is also fraught with such things and um, yeah the the rock and roll lifestyle of drinking and doing loads of drugs and and partying and and just that whole lifestyle just just rolled on, you know, and um, I was blessed with my beautiful son from unfortunately an unhealthy relationship, but that led me incrementally back to God in protecting my son's innocence and and having really strong boundaries against anything that I didn't think was appropriate in a child's world. And uh, but unfortunately, the, the situation with his father wasn't healthy, <clears throat> I'll just say that, and um, I ended up with PTSD from it um, when my son was just a few months old, and the, that's when I got sucked into this new age self-healing doctrine and, and theosophy which it is, um, it stems a lot from the Theosophical Society, yeah. all runs back to the mystery schools of Babylon, but I didn't know that at the time. And um, so I started doing a lot of yoga and uh, guided meditations and angel meditations, and um, that led on, it just, it just, it spirals on and it self-perpetuates and it's this <laughs> never-ending works that if we don't know anything about the Bible and we don't have any sort of faith, uh, we don't know anything about God or the warnings in the Bible, then we don't know where actually the Bible directly warns against such things. And um, 
I got quite deeply into that. I was, I ended up doing, I was doing quantum but healing. Tell me look after the kids. It was quantum healing meditations. You can come and stand quietly next to me. And, um, which is basically like out of body experiences and, um, yeah, having direct contact with these spiritual entities which at the time I thought were benevolent beings and that were helping me develop myself and self-heal and, um, and, and I did actually, through all of this, this works of my own doing, I did actually get myself over the PTSD and the adrenal fatigue and all of these physical symptoms. I was, as I said, using yoga a lot. Um, and I started to build a business out of it, helping other people recover from narcissistic abuse to wake up to what it really was. I, I'd done, it's now five years, so I'm studying psychology. From when I had my son, I was studying psychology and development anyway, which is what helped me figure out the cognitive side of it. And, and a lot of that is true, but psychology is somewhat of a pseudoscience itself. And unfortunately, all of the other people in the industry are leading people towards spiritual wickedness and spiritual occultism. It's all leading people towards meditation and mindfulness and self-healing and, and all of this self-work, so doing the work on yourself, going into your trauma and processing it. And um, I just didn't realise what it really was. Um, so, nothing like bad happened to make me wake up. I was just about to start channeling my first course to help other people. Oh my goodness, sorry, Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for saving me. Um, to, to teach praise all God. of the, praise <laughs> God, I know. To teach other people all of these things that I'd used to help myself out of these situations. And, and to, to, to self, self heal. Um, and I was just starting to channel a course. I'd set up a business around it, helping other people wake up to the, to the abuse and, and, and getting themselves out of it for a start. So, I mean, that bit was positive, but the next stages of it were not um, as benevolent as I believed at the time. Um, I'd done my toddler yoga teacher training. I was just about to start teaching children from 18 months old um, yoga and meditation. And um, oh, I'd just been offered a chapter in a book which was set up to be a bestseller to share my healing methods and my journey of, of how I how I got myself out of narcissistic abuse and how I healed from PTSD and got myself out of the other side of that. And um, praise, praise you, Lord. Praise God you. <laughs> basically mm. just went, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I came to him not from looking for God and not from, from looking for anything spiritual. I was looking for the truth of the global situation. And that was why I was so open to to the truth. I wanted to know the truth no matter what it meant, mm. like no matter what that was, I wanted it with all of my heart. I wanted to understand. And and I've always been one to, I'm very passionate about my beliefs and I will argue them to the death, but if somebody presents me with some conflicting information and I can see, you know, the truth in that and, and then I will argue that, I will take that onto, my, onto myself and, I'll, and I will argue, argue that just as, as, as fervently. And so I was open to the truth. I was open to knowing him even though I didn't know he was the truth. And so it, the, the last piece, I mean the Lord was leaving me breadcrumbs of truth and, and I see that now. <laughs> and Somebody said to me that there's a difference between religion and faith. And that was the final piece that really made me question um, and, and be open to it, I suppose. I, 
because I've always been so against religion because I knew about the control and a lot of Satanism within it. And, um, you know, obviously about the Catholic Church and everything from my father's experience. And um, it sounds really funny, but God's been using the internet. <laughs> and, and like, yeah. he, he sort of put YouTube videos in front of me. Like, a friend sent me um, a series, a playlist from, from the Fuel Project, God bless them and their ministry, which linked together a lot of things from Lucifer through Babylon. And I got as far as the mystery schools and started to be convicted. And I had so many questions. And I went looking for why yoga is bad. And the testimony that the Lord put in front of me, praise God, was one of a, um, uh, she was an ex-witch who was brought up under the Mormon church. And she was the one warning against yoga, um, among other things. And, and then the questions really started. And, and thankfully, a lovely woman who was here and she's watching this, thank you, you know who you are, um, started giving me scripture. Oh, before that, I'd gone and asked my father if I could borrow his Bible. And, um, and he seemed a bit taken aback, but was, was like, yeah, sure. And asked me why. And I said, because um, I think we're... <laughs> I think we're living in the last book of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, so I opened the Bible, having not seen one for about 30 years, and uh, started trying to read Revelation, which I don't, I don't, I don't really advise to anybody, because... Yeah, it's, it's crazy, but, um, but I don't know. At least, you know, I, I knew, at least I understood the season we were in, even without having ever having ever picked the Bible up. And um, yeah, so, so thankfully this woman could give me answers and I had so many questions asking her about why what I had been doing was wrong biblically and she fired <coughs> all the right scripture at me, all the scripture about divination and witchcraft and um, you know, not getting ourselves into altered states of consciousness, which was all that I'd been doing for the previous sort of four years or whatever, and I was going deep into it. I was, you know, I'd been, oh gosh, I'd internalized a Sanskrit mantra, which was like, oh, praising all of the seven chakras and all of these, you know, Lucifer and his cohorts and all of just All the these, same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Well, this, is, this is what linked it all together when I realized I could see all of the same things in the Illuminati as all of this spiritual New Age stuff that I thought was all benevolent and all love and light and that so many people in the world are now embracing because they're kind-hearted, well-intentioned people who just know nothing about its origins. And I mean, I couldn't see the similarities and all of the same symbols and all of this, the eyes and the triangles and I mean, it goes on and on and on. And I just, I woke up when I had the scripture given to me. I just, I just had this moment. I, it was literally in an instant, I, I was convicted. I knew, I just, I felt terrified. I felt absolutely terrified about these things that I had let into myself because I was, I could drop into meditation in a second and channel these spirits and, it feels vile saying it <laughs> to mm. now as a child of God. It's, it, I, I was, you know, doing things that would make most Christians blood turn cold and their toes curl. Um, but at least I know about it. And, and I think it's so dangerous that there are lots of Christians who don't know about the extent of the spiritual danger and, and like how, uh, how steeped the rest of the world is in it. Um, and, and, and it's growing, it's growing at a, an exponential speed, but praise God, he is dragging people out of it at an incredible Amen. speed, he really is, since yes. I've woken up, I just see it all around me, and, and it's so beautiful, praise, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. and um, yeah, so I had this conviction, and, and instantly I, 
I could see all of these things in my house light up like all of these horrible spirits where I literally, I'd been doing Feng Shui with crystals that I was charging in moon ceremonies and they were literally all around my house. And I went and gathered them all up into my Tibetan singing bowl, which, you know, hmm. and I, I, I gathered them all up and I didn't know what to do with them because I didn't want to just chuck them out in the garden. And, and I went and got my tarot cards because I was doing that as well with the astrology that I'd been closely following for for the years, the three, three or four years. And, and I chucked my tarot cards in the fire, which was burning well next to me. And I just started crying and begging for forgiveness and protection and, and making sure this time that I was praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob Come on. And, that, and his son, Jesus of Nazareth, mm. because there are also all of the false Jesuses at yeah, the moment. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, I wanted to be sure I was praying to the right God and the right Jesus this time. And I felt what can only be described as like, it's as if I had a stage curtain over me. I could feel this weight on top of me, sort of hunching me over. And I, I think perhaps I felt the weight of my sin all of a sudden. And I carried on just praying and crying. And, and I felt the whole of the, the presence and the atmosphere of the room shift. Like it, like everything lifted. Christ, everything, just the, the whole of the atmosphere of the room lifted and this weight Come on. lifted off Praise me. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> God. And, and I knew that I was safe. Like I knew it was him. I knew it was true. And, um, and then like something strange happened. I mean, obviously when we're coming to the Lord, especially after almost leading all of these people towards Lucifer. The other side doesn't want to let go of us. Mm. And, and the fire went out and I could feel myself being pulled from either side. Like, like there was literally somebody either side of me pulling me. And I, just, I was just still praying and crying and, and thanking him and, and begging him for forgiveness and protection. But, and I knew, I just knew, I knew that I was safe. Come from on. the moment it had changed and and so I carried on praying for a while and, and that experience stopped like I said I knew that I was safe I, I, I knew it was him and I knew he was the truth and and just to prove that you know that it was a like you know this is a spiritual thing that had happened and it was the other side trying to trying to hold on to me and, because I relit the fire afterwards and, and the tarot cards just burned there wasn't didn't seem to be any physical reason why that had happened so and um and he's changed me instantly like within within two weeks i was an entirely different person i dressed differently i have never listened to worldly music since then i don't i, I wasn't watching anything anyway i've only watched things about God and mm. you know the Lord and, and and kind of that side of the deception like you know it's, it's important that we keep our eyes on him and we don't get too caught up in in all of the other side even if we're trying to help expose it which I have been but you know he, he is my main focus and, and I've been spending my time reading the Bible and praying and and he also changed my son instantly Hallelujah. Praise you, Allah. We were doing meditation and yoga and stuff together, like every day. So I had to explain to him why we weren't doing that anymore. And he was instantly accepting. And, and God has been working in marvellous ways in him as well. He now wakes up and quotes chapter titles and, and verse numbers at me. So I, I look them up and... and, and <laughs> He's just so full of the Lord as well, and he's on his own walk with the Holy Spirit, which Amen. is just such a blessing. Come on. And, mm -hmm. and as I have been, and, and I've been totally changed. And what Roger said earlier about there being a God-shaped hole that nothing else can fill, I feel that so That's much. So, yeah. From losing my mother at, at a young age, and this was part of the reason I, you know, I suppose I was looking for something I was looking for him, but I didn't know he was what I was looking for. 
and I, I had this, I always had this like sort of chasm inside me from where I, from the, you know, I had trauma from losing my mother so young, and um, and and <laughs> I don't feel like that anymore. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's literally God. taken that feeling away. He's like, you know, filled me from the inside with the Holy Spirit, and it's like nothing Hallelujah. I've ever felt before. And, Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And, and I just pray that he uses my testimony to help other people out with the deception, which he has been, and, and I pray, Lord, that you continue to do that and to speak through me and to guide me, to guide my hand and to guide my tongue and, and to bend me to thy will and continue to, to guide me. <coughs> and my son and to to protect us and to sanctify us more and more each day and hallelujah yeah to prepare amen. us for the kingdom amen <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah can i just say um it's amazing how this church is growing we've got so many new people three here being baptized and um, this young lady tells people on the internet, and there's lots of you people in the same prison that she was in are being told how to get released. And uh, can we, we say it saved a few months. I mm. mean, can we decide we're going to tell people? They're all prisoners. He's, he has deceived the whole world. Yes. Revelation 12, verse 9. He's deceived them all. I mean, I think from this young lady and from uh, Layla and others, and you know, I've got, I'm in contact with a lot, mainly nearly all girls, all over the world. I'm having the opportunity and the privilege and the pleasure of talking to them, praying with them. It's a fantastic thing. God is on the move, even in this church. So thank you so much. It was wonderful, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now we'll do the deed. Yep. You okay? Um, when, can you can you take care of that? Where is that? Is it still warm? Yeah, it's okay. I had a chip. I filled it nearly full mm -hmm. um, last night. And somebody said, put bubble wrap over it, which I did. Mm -hmm. And it was still warm this morning, so. <laughs> Katrina, on the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.